I'm back on the Staten Island Ferry with yet another new phone. This episode of the Staten Island Restaurant Tour is the first to use my third new phone of the year, the Google Pixel 7a, and features side-by-side -side food shots with another of my many phones, the Samsung Galaxy A14. We'll get to those in a moment. First, welcome to Annadale, the seventh from last stop on the Staten Island Railway. Annadale has historical ties to Anna Seguin, a descendant of the French Huguenot Protestants, linking it to previous episodes of the tour via stations at Huguenot, named for the Huguenots, and Prince's Bay, with the Seguin Mansion. This was the second rail stop so far to feature a brick facade station house atop the platforms, rebuilt in 1939, though its predecessors date back to 1910 and 1860. Even with an extreme crop, the pixel shows the brickwork nicely, if you zoom a bit. As usual, I had to decide in which direction to walk, north to a neighborhood called Arden Heights, or south to one dominated by Blue Heron Park. I'm saving nature walks for warmer weather, so I went north. My stroll took me from the station down Annadale Road to where it merges with Amboy Road, then up Alby Avenue to North Railroad Street. Staten Island, like much of the Frost Belt, has lots of streets named Railroad along the tracks. The logic is inescapable, but the streets are more pleasant than you'd suspect, and quieter too as the SIR passes only twice per hour. Along the way, this being the last day of November, the Christmas decorations were out in front of several homes. This is not one of the grander ones, yet somehow the modest house, skeletal snowman, and spiraling white wire Christmas trees captured my eye with their elegance and restraint. Let's call this style Staten Island Tasteful. Study of photojournalist and twisty tree, just a shadow of my former self. Dance of the Tin Soldiers along North Railroad Street. Cue the Nutcracker. While the pixel was good with extremes of bright and dark, it struggled with the wheelbarrow planter. And here we are at Il Sogno, at one of Staten Island's many small retail clusters, with its canopied outdoor dining area in front. The late November weather, though bright and photo-friendly, was not ideal for outdoor dining, but when conditions permit, this must be a nice place to dine and lounge around. Folks must like Il Sogno. At last count, diners had posted 135 photos of the restaurant and its food on Google. The pictures of both the restaurant and the food look gorgeous. I had to see them for myself. Here's a view of the bar from my table. The place was dark, but a little natural light hit my table, illuminating the bread basket and the sweet eggplant spread, which was similar to the one I'd had in episode one at Angelina's. Sweetened with brown sugar, I'm guessing. The star of the show was the stuffed baked clams. They were succulent and satisfying. I forgot to use the little dedicated clam fork and devoured most of them with the larger dinner fork before realizing what I was doing. They were just so good I forgot my manners. This unretouched shot was taken with the Pixel 7a. I have brightened a few shots here and there, but left the food shots alone. Here's another with the Samsung A14. I don't want to make a habit of this dual photography, but I needed to evaluate which camera I'll be taking along in the future. Does the Samsung have the edge in color? Next up was Bucatini Putinesca, a hearty union of fat noodles, black olives, capers, fat pale tomato chunks that reminded me of potatoes, and what was probably a tomato paste based sauce. It sure hit the spot. Here it is with the Pixel 7a. And here it is again with the Samsung A14. In both cases, I'm using the basic out-of-the-box photo mode, not the specialized food porn mode, which has actually proven less effective with the A14. The highlights glistening on the pasta seem more prominent with the Samsung, and the grated Parmesan is in better focus. As I enjoyed my meal, a table of elderly ladies behind me discussed the migrant crisis in New York City. A sudden influx is taxing the city's resources. As they talked about the long-ago immigration experiences of their families, I realized I was witnessing the clash of different generations of migrants. Today's migrants, Latino guys in black shirts and pants with somber faces and impeccable manners, cooked and served most of the meals on the tour. Anthony Bourdain once wrote that a serious chef learns to speak Spanish. If I'd had the presence of mind, I'd have scribbled this note in my notebook and left it in the black leather folder with the credit card slip. I hope the hard-working guys in the kitchen get to see this. In Italian, il sogno means the dream. 
This is what it looks like when your train pulls in just as you arrive with no time to spare. A first for the tour. I wished I'd been 30 seconds earlier with enough time to boot up the pixel and grab a shot of the train's nose as it came down the tracks. But settling for this inferior framing was better than waiting 30 minutes for the next train, as the trains are timed to arrive in St. George up north to meet the ferries. Next stop on the SIRT will be Eltingville, where the leading candidate is a Turkish joint, though it may be edged out by coal-fired pizza. As you can see, some trees are bare of leaves in this the first week after Thanksgiving, though elsewhere on the island I still saw green, gold, and red. As the day cooled and the bright skies turned mildly smoggy, I sought out the ferry's warmer and less crowded lower level. That tiny splinter behind the guy immersed in his phone is the Freedom Tower, and yet another dirty window shot. The Freedom Tower has strong emotional resonance for a New Yorker because, of course, it replaced the Twin Towers. It evokes murder and tragedy and heartbreak, but also recovery and optimism and improvement. My heart beats a little faster each time I see it. These trips to Staten Island have become addictive. They give me a chance to explore previously unseen parts of this great city, relax in tranquil neighborhoods filled with people who are always low-key and often kind, and enjoy the comfort of comfort food. I hope to squeeze in a few more episodes of the tour before the really frigid weather sets in. Camera experiments notwithstanding, clear skies and mild temperatures are way more important than megapixels. If you're enjoying the Staten Island restaurant tour, you can follow the blog version at medium.com. To follow the YouTube version, click follow next to my name at the top, and then click subscribe to get emails on new episodes. See you soon.